Here's the design that we will start with and how it will look in the end. Let's first drag out the toolbars we will be needing for this project. First we will start with the text toolbar and then the effects toolbar. Once again, bringing out the toolbars just makes it easier to access the tools that we'll be using during this lesson, making the design process more efficient. In this example, we will be using the guides to help us. First, we need to get an idea of where the center point is on the circles. The reason will become apparent as we go along. To do this, we need to select one of the outside circles and then use the center grab handles as reference points to place our guides. Let's drag a guide from the top ruler and place it directly over the side grab handles located on each side of the selected object. This will ensure that the guide is over the middle of the circle. We can do the same with the vertical guide. We will drag it out from the side ruler and place it directly over the top and bottom grab handles. Now we need a guide placed on top of the yellow ring. And another guide placed on the upper part of the inner yellow ring. This will help us with defining the size of our text. This doesn't have to be done perfectly because we just want to get an idea of that spacing in the yellow ring. Next we'll take the measuring tool and starting at the top guide, hold the shift key Click and drag the tool until we reach the second guide. Looking in Design Central, it shows that the distance is about 1.3 inches. This will help us when sizing the text later. Since we are going to be using the guides, it's good to make sure that we have Snap to Guide. To get there, we'll click on the View pull-down menu, hover our mouse over Snap and then click on Snap to Guide, which in this case is already enabled. The next step is to place text within the yellow ring. To do this, we'll be using another text tool, Arc Text. Before we do this on this drawing, let's switch to another drawing so that we can see how Arc Text works and some of its options. Let's start by clicking on Arc Text. Hover the tool somewhere in the middle of the drawing area. Then click, hold, and drag the tool, and a circle starts to form. Once the arc or circle is the size we want, we release the mouse button, and a text cursor appears on top of the circle. The circle is temporary, and it basically provides a path of where the text will be placed. Now we can start typing our letters, arc, text. If we look at Design Central, we are given several options on how and where we want the text placement. Let's start with the two buttons on the side. This button will place the text on top of the arc, which is where it is currently. And this button will place the text on the bottom of the arc. The three buttons below are for how the text will be placed with regard to the arc line, whether it is above the arc line, within the arc line, or beneath the arc line. This applies if the text is at the bottom of the arc as well. Let's hit enter and place another line of text. Notice that it is automatically placed below the circle or arc. This is because if we look in Design Central again, there are these two buttons which determine this. The button that is currently selected, when there are two lines of text, places the text on the top of the circle and the second line of text on the bottom, as we have here. The other button will place both lines of text on top. The top value sets the radius size of the circle. The value below that indicates the angle of the circle that the text is placed, for cases where perhaps you need the text on the side of the arc. The text is like any other text. We can highlight the text if we need to change spelling. If we click on the text character tab in Design Central to change a different font or to resize the text. If we click on the paragraph tab in Design Central, we can set the text justification as well as other adjustments as we would with normal text. 
Let's switch back to our original drawing and use Arc Text to place text on the yellow ring. Recall that we place the guides to help us to do this. So let's click on the Arc Text tool, click on the center where the two guides intersect the center of the design, and then drag the circle to where it is just within the yellow ring, making sure that we keep it in line with the vertical guide. The reason we do this is because wherever the mouse button is released, that's where the text is going to start. When the circle is just within the yellow ring, we can release the mouse button. Let's now type our first line of text, Grand Canyon. Press Enter to start the next line of text. And notice Design Central has the button set so that the text is placed at the bottom of the circle. Here we start typing again, Arizona. Now let's adjust the text by increasing the circle or arc size a little bit. Let's select the text, click on the Text Character tab, change the font to Compacta, and then make the font size a little smaller. The final step to our design is to make a shadow of our text. Once again, there is a specific effect tool that we use for this. Let's click on the Select tool and switch to the previous drawing. Let's start by clicking on the Shadow Effect tool button. It then places a shadow on the text. Let's take a look at Design Central and review some of the options and their effects on the shadow. Right now the shadow is a drop type in that it looks as if the text is casting a shadow onto a wall directly behind the text. There are three other choices we can choose from. Block will create a shadow that looks as if it is attached to the back of the lettering and extended back. Perspective will draw the shadow to some point in the background, making the text look as if it is shooting out from the background. Cast will look as if it is casting a shadow in the background, making the text look as if it is standing up by itself. It's probably best not to use with our example, but if we just had plain text, it would provide a nice effect. The two values just below the shadow type affects the position of the shadow relative to the object, or in our case, the text. The first value positions the shadow left and right, and the second value positions the shadow up or down. The shadows can be adjusted visually as well. If we click on the shadow box provided, we can adjust the look of the shadow, as in this case, where we can adjust the position of the drop shadow. Once the shadow is to our liking, we can simply click on the green check mark to accept the changes. When the shadow effect is applied to any object, in this case the arc text, it will be attached to the object. Let's choose a different shadow, such as block shadow for our text, and grabbing the shadow box allows us to move it around as well. When we switch to the perspective shadow, we are supplied with more options to adjust the shadow. This value is the perspective ratio. This determines how far the shadow stretches into the distance. Let's move it toward the middle a little using the position values above in Design Central. Once again, we are given grab handles to control all of these visually. The shadow relief pull-down choices determine how the shadow is going to be created in relation to the object. Remember that shadows will be cut out separately in a different color, so these are choices of how we would like the shadow to surround or be placed under the original object. To show this, let's separate this shadow from the text. This is done by right-clicking on the object and selecting Separate Shadow. Let's move the text to the side so that we can see the relief effect. Let's apply the perspective shadow to the text again. Choose another relief, click the green check mark, separate the shadow, and move the text. And we can see that this relief will have the text cut out from it. We can start to see the differences between the two types of reliefs. Let's apply the same shadow a couple more times just to see the differences between the different reliefs.
Let's return to our design. Click on the Shadow Effect tool, and we'll set the relief to the second choice, where it will spread completely underneath the text. This way, we won't have any edges showing in the lettering when it is mounted. We can lower the perspective ratio a little, and then since we want the perspective to be in the center, we can set both position values to zero. Now we can click the green check mark to accept the values so we can see what it is going to look like. We need to make some minor adjustments so the shadow mostly stays within the yellow ring. Finally, let's make the color of the shadow a medium green. And there we have it. That's the end of this lesson. As you can see, there are many options for using Arc Text Tool as well as the Shadow Tool. We suggest that you should experiment with all the new tools we've discussed in these three lessons. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call.